So the purpose of this video is to help you get started quickly using Golang CI Lint on your own project. I'm Jonathan Hall. Today I'm going to talk to you about my Golang CI Lint configuration. If you want to use my configuration as it is, there's a link in the description so you can download my exact configuration file and use that as your starting point. The official website is golangci-lint.run. If you click on the install option on the left, you will get instructions for installing Golang CI Lint on your local machine or in your CI environment. I'm not talking about that today. I'm just talking about the configuration file itself. The configuration file I am demonstrating today is designed to work with, as of this recording, the latest version of Golang CI Lint, which is 1.45.2. There's a very good chance, if you're watching this, even just a few days into the future, that new versions have come out. The list of supported linters is constantly changing. It's usually growing, although occasionally one is deprecated or moved. So be sure to check out the list of officially supported linters for your version. If you go, if, assuming you're using the latest version, Again, go to golangci-lint.run and click on the linters option here on the left and it will show you a complete uh, list of the available linters. At the top of this page, you see the enabled by default. That is to say, if you were to run Golang CI Lint without a configuration file, these are the linters that you would be executing. There are, however, many linters in the disabled category that I believe are very valuable and that's why I want to show you my configuration file so you can take advantage of some of those. I'm not gonna go through every linter on this list. There's there's far too many for a short video like this. Uh, and as I said, the, the list changes frequently. So whatever I said would be outdated anyway. So here you can see my configuration file. The important part for this video is the section uh, in, uh, under linters. Uh, so you can see I have selected this list of linters to enable. It's a pretty long list. Um, we'll go through it quickly. Uh, the first section, I'm just gonna breeze over. This is just a copy of the list of default linters. So I, I basically said, I want to use the default configuration, plus I want to add some additional linters to my configuration. Let's, let's talk quickly about what the default configuration does though. So the first one here, you see dead code, that just removes unused uh, pieces of code. So if, you, if, there's, there's, a, if there's a function uh, that's never called anywhere, this will trigger that for you and, and, and tell you that you could delete it. Error check, this is probably the single most important linter uh, in my opinion when it comes to Go code. This will tell you if you have failed to check an error uh, that's returned from a function. Uh, and this is one of the most common mistakes I see, especially for people just starting to use Go, uh, they forget to do error checking. So this will ensure that you don't forget to do that. And Go simple is a nice one. Uh, basically it just tells, tells you some ways that you can simplify your code. It's not a big deal. Not, none of these are, are super important. They just make your code a little bit simpler and easier to read. Go vet is, this will tell you things like you use the wrong percent verb in a printf statement. Uh, and, and there's a, quite a number of things it does. Um, it, it's hard to, to categorize them all concisely because it, it kind of touches a lot of weird areas in, in various parts of, uh, of the code, uh, but it's a good one to run. NF assign is a great one. It will tell you if you have uh, unused variable assignments. So that doesn't mean an unused variable. It means that you've assigned something to a variable and then never used that value afterwards. This goes right along with error check. It can really help you detect bugs. You know, maybe you think you're doing something and you, you failed to. Maybe you copied and pasted code or reordered something and now that variable that was being used no longer is. This will warn you about that. Static check um, is a great one. Uh, it's kind of like GoVet. Uh, in fact, it really, in my opinion, almost replaces GoVet. So you, you could disable GoVet, especially if you're having problems with performance. If, if you have a large project and it's taking several minutes to run your linter, uh, you could use static check instead of GoVet potentially. Uh, but it, it does many of the same things that GoVet does, but more, and it's a little bit stricter. Uh, so I, I highly recommend static check. Struct check um, is less essential, but it's useful. Uh, it basically detects unused fields in, a, in your structs. So if you've created a struct uh, and, and you added a, a, a field to it, but you've never used it, or maybe you did use it in the past, but you've refactored and now you're no longer using it, it will warn you that that's no longer being used, so you can delete that. Type check, this one honestly probably isn't very useful in most cases because it does the same type checking that the compiler does. This is one to remove if performance is a problem. 
unused, I like this one a lot. Uh, it will detect unused constants, variables, functions, and types. So if, if you've defined, say, an error type or, or a string type or something, and you end up not using it, either because you've never implemented it, or maybe you, you refactored and you're no longer using it, this will warn you. So this is one of those that most comes up when doing refactoring, and you've changed something, and now you're no longer using a function or a variable. This will tell you so you can clean that up. So it's related to the dead code one at the top. And var check is a, another one in the same category. It finds unused global variables and constants. So this will be package level um, variables and constants. It'll just warn you if they're no longer being used. So that's the list of default linters uh, that uh, I just encourage you to use. Again, some you might disable for performance reasons if that's an issue. So, but now moving on to the perhaps more interesting and more important part, the linters that I suggest running that are not enabled by default. So the first one, th these are basically in alphabetical order, not in order of priority or importance. But the first one is Go Cyclo, or uh, there's a new one. I'm not using it yet, but it's called Cyclop. And these detect cyclometric co complexity, which is basically how many conditions or uh, uh, ifs, for loops, and so on you have in each function. And the idea here is to, to warn you if it gets too high so that you can uh, keep your functions and your for loops and, and, all, and all your, your logic blocks small and easy to read and easy to understand. Go const is a nice one. Uh, it detects repeated values, uh, particularly strings, I think. Uh, so if you have uh, a one string used 50 times in your code, it will, it will request that you turn it into a constant. And that's just good hygiene. It makes your code easier to read and less likely to introduce a typo. A really good one, of course, uh, GoFumpt, uh, or, and there's two versions of this one. The, the official one, G-O-F-M-T, uh, will just ensure that your code is uh, conforming to the standard Go format. If you want to, you can go a step further, which I like to do, and use GoFumpt, G-O-F-U-M-P-T, which, which does the same, but it's a little bit stricter uh, and a little bit nicer. So I, I usually use GoFumpt, at least on my own projects, uh, but you could use either one. Uh, and this just ensures that your code is formatted in a standard way uh, so that all the developers on your team use the same format. Go imports is kind of similar. Uh, it works on the imports statements, though. It basically makes sure they're in alphabetical order. Uh, that's a really good one to use. Misspell is one that I like because I'm terrible at spelling. Even though I'm a native English speaker, I'm not a very good speller. If you're not a native English speaker, this one can really be a lifesaver. I have seen this catch so many spelling errors, especially in embarrassing places like error messages or even uh, regular user output. Uh, it's important to have that look uh, to, to be spelled correctly uh, if you want to make a good impression on your clients. Um, it's also just great for things like uh, variable names and comments. So if you're not a good speller like I am, I highly recommend this one. And then revive. This is a really important one. Uh, I don't know why it's not one of the, in the default list. Um, it, it's just a general purpose linter. It's kind of like GoVet, but uh, it, it does the checks it does are different. And honestly, I don't remember exactly what they are, but I know that when I run my linter, I get revive uh, failures a lot. So it, it really helps me tighten up and clean up my code. So I, I strongly suggest this one. Unconvert is a fine one. Uh, it tells you when you are unnecessarily doing a type conversion. So suppose you maybe have a number and you uh, convert it to a float, but it's already a float, then you don't need to do that conversion. This, this will tell you about that. So um, it's especially useful with things like uh, when, when you're working with like time or duration, you know, things like that, where it's not always obvious exactly what the underlying type is. This will help you clean up your code in that way. And then unparam is another one I like. Uh, this one will tell you when you have unused function parameters. Uh, so maybe you have a function that takes three arguments and only one of them is used. This will tell you. So you can either remove the unused arguments or uh, use the blank identifier to indicate that you know they're unused, things like that. So it just helps you tighten up your code and remove unused cruft. That's my suggestion for getting started. If you if you stop the video right now, you're fine. <laughs> use these uh, and, you're, and you're good to go. However, there are some others that are that are useful in certain situations, so I'll talk about those next under the optional section. Um, so if you uh, if you want to keep listening, uh, these are the ones to consider uh, depending on your situation. The first one here is body close, which will check whether the HTTP response bodies are closed. In, in other words, when you do an HTTP request, you get a response object back, and you must close that body. If you don't, that uh, that body potentially the network connection just sits open forever. Of course, it will time out eventually, but it will keep using memory for the duration of the program run. So you need to call 
uh, response.body.close uh, to clear those resources. And this ensures that you do that. Now you've noticed many of these are common to that. That's because I'm not using them on this project, uh, but th they do make sense on certain projects. So if you're not using HTTP requests at all, then of course body closes is, is worthless to you. So you could eliminate that one. Go error 113. Basically it helps ensure that you're using modern best practices with error handling, that your your errors are wrapped properly, uh, that they're that you're using uh, good practices with error types and so on. Um, I'm not using that on this project because this project is much older than Go 113 and I'm not using those good practices yet. Maybe I'll update the project at some point and then I'll enable this winter, but for now I'm not. DepGuard, I've never used it, but it, it's the, the premise is nice. Basically you can say, uh, you can configure it to uh, not allow certain package imports. Uh, so, so maybe you've decided that you're gonna use a particular YAML parser and not another one and you're on a large team and maybe not everybody understands that, you can set up DepGuard to say, only use this YAML parser. Any others, it, it rejects. So, so that's something you consider if you uh, need to prohibit the importing of certain packages for some reason, for security reasons or compliance reasons, etc. Duple or DUPL detects duplicate code. This one can be nice, um, especially on a large code base. You might find that uh, you have a lot of code that's, that's kind of copied and pasted. Uh, this will help detect that for you and give you an indication where you could consider doing a refactoring. Error check JSON um, is basically some JSON encoder and decoder specific checks. It does some, uh, it, it checks when you pass something into the JSON encoder. If it's uh, a type that can't be encoded, it will warn you about that. I think that's done by some of the other linters too, but uh, this one specifically uh, does that. It also is smart enough to know in some cases when an error will always be null uh, or, or nil coming from the encoder or decoder. So, uh, you know, th there's some things uh, like that, some JSON specific. Uh, logic there. If you're using a lot of JSON, that's probably one to consider. Go MND or magic number detection. So this one is kind of like Go const, uh, the one I mentioned before that defines repeated values that can be made constants. Although it doesn't look for repeated values, it just looks for numbers other than I think zero and one that are just uh, used in the raw format. And the basic idea is that these are considered magic numbers. You know, if you have, if you're passing the number 693 into a function, what does 693 mean? Uh, it needs some sort of indication. The easiest way, of course, to clean that up is to make it a constant. That's why I say it's similar to this go const one. Uh, if you make it a constant, then uh, that constant's name will tell you what the, the number does and then it, that uh, makes a linter happy. So that's one to consider for, for cleaner code. Uh, naked ret is one I like. Uh, I really don't like naked returns in Go. It's one of the features I, I almost wish didn't exist. Of course, there are times when it's, uh, when it's important but it's not my favorite feature. Anyway, this linter will warn you when you're doing naked returns on functions of a certain length. Uh, and I don't remember what that number is, but if it's longer than 10 or 15 lines or something, it will start to, to complain about naked returns because those are just hard to read. These next two are useful if you're using SQL in your code. I'm not in this project, which is why it's commented out. Whenever I do use SQL, I always have these two linters enabled. The first one, rows error check, it ensures that you check the error status of the rows object. Uh, it's because that's not a, it, it's not returned as an object, uh, you know, as an error value. It's easy to overlook that. So this ensures that you don't. And then SQL close check, makes sure that you always close your rows and your statements uh, when they're not being used. Otherwise they sit around eating up memory and potentially leaving your network connections open to your database uh, for indefinitely. And the last one on my list today is T parallel. It detects the inappropriate use of T dot parallel in some of your tests. Uh, so that, that's just a good one to use in general. Um, it's not maybe the most important thing, although you, you certainly could have some strange bugs in your tests if you're using that inappropriately. So it can help guard against that. So there you have it. That's my default Golang CLN config. There's a link in the description. You can click on that to download this file exactly and use it and run with it. Of course, you are encouraged to tweak it for your own needs. Again, look at the list of official linters, uh, browse through it, see if there are some that apply to your project or to your style that you want to enable that I didn't talk about. I hope that linting will make your life easier as you go forward on your next Go project.